I want to show you this subject of righteousness, revealing how the gospel is the answer or why the gospel. Looking at the subject of circumcision, so let's go quickly. Acts chapter 7. Let me show you from Acts chapter 7, from verse 6. Now, this was Stephen's message or speech just before they stoned him to death, the Jews. And I want you to see what he said. And I'm not going to read the whole message to you, but I'll show you what's needful. Acts chapter 7 from verse 6. So I said I'm going to be showing you from the subject of what? Circumcision. Acts chapter 7 from verse 6. And God speak on this wise. Now I said that I'm not going to read out his full message to you. I'll just read a part. And God spoke or spake on this wise that his seed, whose seed Abraham's seed, should sojourn in a strange land. And that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. Now, we're about to get into the part about circumcision and I want you to pay attention. And he gave him the covenant. Who? Abraham. The covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day and begot Jacob. Now go to verse. So you see from there that um, he gave. I want. I just wanted to see that that he gave him the covenant of circumcision. That it was given to Abraham. But it's important that you understand that these things are a type. And I was teaching you something about biblical types. What are they? A foreshadowing of the real thing. Like, they're just, they're just a shadow. The real thing is going to come ahead. So circumcision was a type. But in this case, circumcision was just a mark of a dealing with God. It was a mark to show that I have called you into this covenant. So it was something that would distinguish him and his seed forever from other people so that was the sign of the covenant or that was the covenant really of circumcision okay to mark a dealing with god an agreement with god john chapter 7 from verse 19 now this is what Jesus talks about and I just want to show you again because it will make sense in just a moment John Lobrakati Legino Sopahai chapter 7 from verse 19 did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keep the law why go ye about to kill me the people answered and said you have a devil you imagine you're talking to Jesus. You have a devil. Thou hast a devil. Who goeth about to kill you? Who wants to kill you? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision. Then he puts, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. Which father? Abraham. So he put this thing about circumcision in the law, but it wasn't from Moses. It started from Abraham. Okay, and on the Sabbath day, you circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken. Are you angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? So he says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge according to righteous judgment. Interesting statement from Jesus. But what I want you to see here is that a covenant of circumcision was given to Abraham. This is important for your spiritual knowledge. It was given to Abraham. It was also further instituted by the law given by Moses. But like I said, these things were only a sign or a shadow. It was just a mark of a dealing with God. 
Now we understand that we are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise which he made to Abraham because we are in Christ. It says, in Abraham shall thy seed be called, you know. It talks about that. So it's a chosen lineage from Abraham. And by faith, the Gentiles get into Christ. Through this gospel, I introduce to you. I explain to you. But look at this. Romans chapter 10. Now it's important you must understand we were never under the law. The Jews were. We never had the covenant of circumcision. It was something of Abraham. But there's something about this circumcision which you're going to see. So go to Romans chapter 10 and hear what the Apostle Paul says. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted unto the righteousness of God. And that is the righteousness which the gospel provides. Which gives you right standing with God by faith, by believing. But the Jews were so concerned about a physical circumcision. And by that circumcision, they said, Abraham is our father. So we, we have every right to God. Don't, don't call him your father. Don't say God is your father. Because physically, they had received that circumcision. They, they circumcised a man on the eighth day. So it was a like the fleshly or the physical sign. So for them, they were qualified. So everything was about their outward work and show. So he says they were going about to seek their own righteousness, which could never measure up because of the law. And, and we're going to see, I'm going to read you more verses because the scriptures are going to preach it for you. So he says they were ignorant of God's righteousness, which righteousness is the true righteousness that works on the heart. Okay. Or that gives the heart right standing liberation in the sight of God. And also is that nature that's received by which they can live right. All right. So a lot of rights there. Now, they've not submitted. He now says, verse 4, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Meaning that when you come into Christ, that's the end of the law. Now he's talking to the Jews. He's talking to Israel because we were never under the law. So he says, they're ignorant of Christ. Because he is the end of the law. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, which the gospel provides by believing. The righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Because Christ is the end of the law. Right? To everyone that believes. So he says, don't say in your heart, who would ascend into heaven to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what did it say? That is the righteousness of faith. The one God's looking for. The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That's the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the lordship of Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, unto right standing with God. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, so this is the message of the gospel. Fixing this problem that man is separated from God. He doesn't have right standing with him. That is, he's not of a perfect heart toward God because of his sin. But he says this righteousness, there's something about the gospel that it brings or provides a righteousness 
but not a righteousness that's based on your keeping the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. But I said I'm showing you through what? Circumcision. So Braca Telegino Sofa High. Romans chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. From verse. Mm-hmm. You know, because you've got to understand Paul's argument. In Romans, he's dealing a lot with righteousness. And he's talking about the law and how it didn't make anything perfect. Instead, it revealed sin and made it more obvious that sin was what it was. So, he talks about circumcision. Verse 25. For circumcision verily profited, that is, it's, it, it's, of, it's of relevance if you keep the law. But if, you be, if, but if you're a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made on circumcision. So, brakatalaki this. I know you're going to pick up. Let me explain this. God sees man afar off. He wants to save him. So he needs a man, right? Because he needs a way for the Messiah to come through. He starts from right, from Abraham. He gives him a covenant of circumcision. And all your generations must be circumcised. So he does it, and it's a sign of his dealing with God. Okay? Now it is instituted into the law. And so you're a part of that chosen race by this sign of circumcision. But he explains something about righteousness. That circumcision is good if you keep the law. Because that's why it was there. But he says if you are a breaker of the law, Now, if you mess up in one, you've messed up in all. That's the rule. So he says, if you're a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made on circumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law. Now, who are the uncircumcision? The Gentiles. Because they don't have that covenant of circumcision. They are afar off. They don't have any dealing with God. But Paul presents something, and this is why sometimes we say Paul is a lawyer. presented his, that he was a his lawyer. arguments. Because he wasn't a lawyer, but he was a tent maker by profession. He was trained under Gamaliel, and he was a tent maker. After that, he was schooled by the Pharisees. He said, concerning the law, I was schooled. I'm a Pharisee of all Pharisees. Meaning that I was trained by the best. He had an understanding of the law. The reason we just say that he's not a lawyer is because he's not a lawyer by profession. It's like if you went and started studying UK or British law, and now you are, you know the law left, right, center. Everybody would believe that, nah, did you study law in school or something like, because of the way you can argue. But it's just that you know it. You just know it. So that was the only thing. But if it's about his knowledge, of course, you can now go from there and just say, okay, he's a lawyer. But he never associated with it. The same way, Jesus never called himself a prophet. But people say he's a prophet. The woman said, come and see a man who has told me my whole life. Come and see a prophet. Many people say prophet, prophet, prophet. But he was not a prophet. A prophet is an inspired speaker. He's one that is sent to maybe declare. And they always testified about the Messiah. 
when the Messiah comes, you call him a prophet too. Who is he testifying about? Is God a prophet? Okay. So, circumcision prophets, but he says, therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Dilo bracasete. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter, by the law, and circumcision, circumcision, does transgress the law. Meaning, he understand. Understand what he's saying. He's saying, you are a Jew, so you are of the circumcision. But if you break the law, it is taken that you are uncircumcised, cut off from Israel. But if a Gentile, a person who doesn't know God, now keeps the law, and he conforms with the righteousness of the law, wouldn't his own circumcision be counted for circumcision? So he says, wouldn't he now be the one to judge you? Though he is by nature of the uncircumcision. So he says about that guy, he says he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. So outwardly, by the flesh, he's not a Jew. Neither is that circumcision. So that, that circumcision too, he says, which is outward in the flesh. That circumcision too is not a Jew. But he says that this uncircumcision, who is now conforming with the righteousness of the law, he says he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And his circumcision is that of the heart. Look, don't lose the subject. Remember, I introduced you to the problem. So he says this guy is a Jew, one inwardly. And his circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god did you see that so he says what advantage then does the jew have or what is the what is the profit in circumcision <laughs> you know this is a whole discussion on the righteousness of the law and how that it doesn't count for anything when you talk about circumcision. So, without taking you through the whole thing, I just want you to see, he says, what, what is circumcision but an outward show? If a person who by nature is not of the circumcision acts but the one who is, then he says his circumcision is inward, which was God's plan from the start. I told you that when he did it with Abraham, that it, that was not the plan. It, it wasn't like, uh, this is because it's, it's the circumcision. He's not after the outward circumcision. But he says these things were a type, a shadow of the real one, where you have a Jew chosen of God, whose circumcision, he's a Jew inwardly, and his circumcision is of the heart. Now the question is, what is the circumcision of the heart? Which we're going to look into. But you see that there was a problem. Now in the circumcision, that is the, the severing or the, the cutting off of, of an irrelevant part. Right? A part that doesn't serve its a purpose. So, when a heart is circumcised, that which is not needed is taken out. I want you to see that that was an outward show of circumcision, but it was not the real thing God was getting at. He was going for a circumcision, but it was not about the outward show. But it was about something inward. After this, you will appreciate your salvation spiritually. You would understand where you are. And how I said, you would come to the conclusion that man, it is impossible for a man to be good without the gospel. It, it is impossible. Because Satan is his God. 
You are either for God or for the devil. He's under the sway of Satan as long as he's not for God. And only the gospel provides for it. But I'll show you this. So Romans chapter 3. It's a long discussion and I, and I want you to read it in your own time. But hmm, chapter 3. Palaguska Paradiga. Oof, this, you know, the way he presented it is is the best way. You know, the way, because if I read to you, you're not, you'll be following his, his discussion. For you follow his discussion. He presented it so beautifully. But let's do from verse 29. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? No. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes. Of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? No, God forbid. He says, yea, we establish the law. The whole idea of the law was so that Sin could be seen for what it was, and the righteousness of God could be distinguished from it. Do you understand? So now we can separate between what is good, what is evil, what God wants, and what he doesn't want. Now he says that this circumcision doesn't count for anything. But... By faith in Christ Jesus, he is able to reconcile the two, bringing in both the Jews by faith and the Gentiles by faith, by believing on the perfect one. But recall that it is a circumcision on the inside that he was after, of the heart. A circumcision of the heart. I believe you're you're getting it little by little, yeah? Galatians chapter 6. So, Galatians chapter 6, verse 11. Kula branuske palides. It is my heart's desire. Galatians chapter 6, verse 11. Now, the Galatian Christians... But the ones who were bothered about the law, they were like, we should still keep the law now. We shouldn't throw it away. But Paul was trying to explain that when you believe on Christ Jesus, the law is fulfilled. But that's what they didn't get. So they said, no, let's have it. He says, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the loss of the flesh. He's trying to explain to you that the law was for a purpose. So that you could distinguish and you would see that you are in sin. So that when Christ comes, you'll be able to accept him. Because you would realize by the law that you are unworthy of anything. And you've not got any salvation. So, it's meant to make you appreciate Christ more. But they, you know, some people were like, you know, they were still dancing around. So, he was complaining, he was like, in verse 11, see, ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. That is, can you see how much I've written to you, trying to explain this thing to you? Some people said, is that he had an eye problem, so he was writing very big, so that he could, no, no, no. It was about his discussion with them. He says, can you see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand? As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. They constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. Because he says, if you want to be circumcised, you want that outward show, keep the law. But he says, neither do they who are circumcised keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Because every time that Jesus talked, they were like, what the, what the children of Abraham? 
Why are you calling God your personal father? He says, we're all, we're all children of God. He said, no, I do the works of my father. Your, your father, the devil. Mm-hmm. You see? So, he says, they're telling you to be circumcised because people are telling them, no, you, you must be circumcised. You must keep the law of Moses. But he says, they, they only want to glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. John says, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth, the real thing God was after, came by Christ Jesus. So he was like, whether circumcision, they, they're only telling you to be circumcised so that they can glory in your flesh, that, oh, you're circumcised or not. But he says, in Christ Jesus, whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, that's not what matters. He's, a, he's about fixing a problem with the heart. He says, it's a new creature, a totally different being. And this is the one thing that Jesus tried to explain to them that they didn't understand. They, they, they didn't understand. So they, they attacked him for many things. He said, you didn't wash your hands before, before you were eating. They said, you healed on the Sabbath day. He said, ah, John's disciples fast. The Pharisees fast. Why, why don't your disciples fast? And, you know, they were troubled. Like, who is this guy? What's he doing? Mark chapter 2. Look what, look what Jesus said. It is my heart's desire. So bracatiline. He said, can the children of the bride chamber fast? Verse 19. While the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom, they don't need to fast. He says, but the days will come where the bridegroom will be taken and they will fast. Then he says, no man also sews a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece, else the new piece that filled it up, taketh away from the old and the rent is made, the tears made worse. You can't patch old clothing with new. It will destroy the, 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 the tear. And no one puts new wine into old bottles. Else, the new wine will burst the bottles and the wine will be spilled and the bottles will be marred. Both will perish. But new wine must be put in new bottles. He's talking about a completely new thing. And that's what they didn't understand about him. Because as far as they were concerned, they were the fulfilled people. We're circumcised. God chose us. We are the chosen people of God. So, Jesus was trying to explain about a new work. A new thing he wanted to do, that God wanted to do. But they were so fleshly minded with their traditions. That there's a Sabbath day and there's a this day. There's this holy day and this day. You know, they were concerned with all that um, religion and custom. He said, your customs have made the word of God of, of non effect. You paralyze the word with your, with your, with your customs and traditions. But what he wanted was a completely new work, which they didn't understand. So when Paul said, in Christ Jesus, you see, you're bothering yourself with base things of the flesh. These things don't matter in Christ Jesus. What matters is a new creature. So he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 17, which we know, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But what I wanted you to see is that when you come into Christ, you become the circumcision. And this circumcision is not that of the outward part, but it is an inward circumcision of the heart. 
And I'm going to show you a few scriptures because what the church needs now is identity. When you know who you are, no one else can tell you anything else. No one can deceive you about it because you know it's who you are. You would stand in that identity. You won't be confused. The world won't determine what works for you and what doesn't work. So, when you come into Christ, there's something that happens to you. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 9. I want you to see what exactly, what exactly happens. Hmm. Okay. For in him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. You're perfect in him. You're perfect in him. I'm perfect in him. See? Which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised. So you're circumcised. But it says, with the circumcision not made with hands, made without hands. And he, he describes this circumcision in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So you put off something. You put off the old man. If you don't know, you would think you're still walking. So some people make some ignorant statements. As long as we're in this flesh, what, do, what, what did you call it? See, I don't know. As long as you're in this flesh, eh, as, as, in, as in blood is running through... <laughs> As long as it's running through your veins, eh, this one must happen. This one. So you find yourself, because you don't know that there was a putting off of this body, you would accept that. You would think that. Do you understand? So you'll be walking, you're living a different aeon. Do you know that eternal life is an aeon? Some people don't understand. Do you know what an aeon is? Okay. An aeon is like a conditioning. It's, a, it's, it's what we refer to as the spirit of the age. What controls the age? There is, is the course of this world. The way it's going. So, when you're not saved, you are actually under death. Sin. So, it rules your life. And you go he says, ye are of your father the devil, and the works of your father you shall do. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't saying, you just, no, 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 no. No, he's saying that's the aeon, that's where you're living. Do you understand? So it's the course. But he says, I give unto my sheep eternal life. Zoe aeononos. It's a different aeon. It's, 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 a, as in, it's a plane of life. Only a few people are living there. But it's what you received. So it's a different, it's, it's, it's an aeon in itself. Do you understand? A course of life. So that's why you can get sick and we, can, and we say, this is an abnormality. But the world will get you to think everybody falls sick. Because that's the conditioning. But you won't know. So, because you don't know, you'd accept it as normal. And the one thing that God cannot um, change in a man's life is his believing, is his conviction. It's the one thing he asks you for, believe. So, if you choose not to, it's the one thing he can't change. As long as you believe or think and you're, you know, it will, it will start as a thought. From thinking like that, you believe it. From believing that, you start talking like that. And you, you see, the Bible, um, James says, the, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. It sets on fire the course of nature. Being set on fire by hell itself. So, it's a... He says, you, you use your tongue to, 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 to destroy your life. And so many people have used it like that. To believe the wrong report. The Isaiah said, who had believed our report? 
Who, who believed? Who believed? Who had believed? Because God is looking. The Bible says that God is pacing through the earth. His eyes are moving to and through the earth to show himself strong among those who trust in him, who have faith in him. So he's looking, but who has believed his report? Who? Some people, the the natural course of life, the natural the, the occurrences of life, they've allowed it defined for them. You see, this happens to you on a daily. You look at your body one, you notice a bump. Very odd looking. So how did it get there? Hmm. Instead of you, the Bible says. Resist the devil. Flee every appearance. Don't give space to him. It even says neutralize his attacks, meaning render them useless. See, when the judiciary says that that thing doesn't hold water, it doesn't hold. It's unconstitutional. Oof. Null and void. That's what it means. So, if you render that thing null and void, what's your concern? But some people are not like that. They go on the internet. I have a strange bump on my skin. What could it mean? What you have done. Thank you. What you've done is you have, you probably, whose report do you really believe? He sent his word, but you didn't believe it. You allowed something else. And now you have decided not to live in that aeon. You drop down to the natural. So you are not diagnosing. You know, you are checking. Then your faith, you know, then when it's bad enough, when the report is bad enough and your faith has been totally obliterated, you now start believing. Oh God, I know you can cure any. There was no problem before. You were fine until you noticed. See, what if I've already noticed? The Bible says that Abraham was not weak in faith. The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He says that not weak in faith. He didn't consider the deadness, meaning that there was a deadness to look at. Do you understand? He didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't consider his old age. He didn't consider all those things. He left the natural. The Bible says he was fully persuaded that he who had promised was able also to deliver. He believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Who had believed our report? But that's not where we're going. So he says, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him. He's describing that circumcision. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen. We are risen. We're not in the grave. There's no death in you. Hmm. Wherein also ye are risen with him through faith. Through the faith of the operation of God. Who had raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. He's showing you what was happening. He says, has forgiven all your trespasses and blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against you, which were contrary to you. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled all principality and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. So he says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. See, this, this, uh, this is a demonic drink. You see, you see, you see, you see this, you see that. It's, you know. So he says, don't allow anybody to judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon. You know, they say, oh man. If you see this one and you see this one, that's what it means. So he says, let no one judge you in regard of all these things, or a new moon or a Sabbath of days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. He says the real essence is Christ. 
that when you grab a hold of this thing, you, you, you won't be bothered about all these things that come to you. So too many people are, are living, do you know, yeah. So the real thing, so there's this circumcision of the heart that's happened. A circumcision. But the real essence is, is of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. I want you to see this. We're still on this. So I'm showing you from the, the subject of circumcision, right? Verse 25. Or verse, from verse 24. Who now, re, okay, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you? And to fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. Okay, verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation. The dispensation of God. All these are big subjects that we can deliberate on. Which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery. This dispensation. He says even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Among the Gentiles. He's going to make known the riches of this thing. Meaning the, the benefits. The, the treasures of this thing. The big things of this thing. That he's planning to manifest it. Amongst the Gentiles. That's a, amongst us. Which is Christ in you. Now people haven't read this properly. Another way of reading this is. What is Christ in you? Or who is Christ in you? He says there's a mystery. There's a dispensation. There's an aeon. There's a life. I told you about the eternal life being an aeon. So he says, this mystery can be put like this. What is Christ in you? Which is Christ in you? Like that, what is his purpose in, in you? He says, the hope of glory. Does it make sense? Meaning, what is Christ in you? Meaning, you were without before. The Bible says, a stranger to the commonwealth of Israel. No hope in the world. But it says, when you received Christ into you, what did you receive? What does it mean? It's why it's the greatest secret. And I want you to study it. Because except we bring out the truth of this life, People would keep thinking he came to set up a religion. They'll keep thinking that he came to set up some kind of religious gathering together of some kind. And you would never find the blessings of Christ coming out in your life. You will forever be trying to prove a point as though it's not a life actually that he came to bring. What most people have known is the religion of Christianity. The set principles, the things, oh, I, I go to church, I this, I that. No, but there is actually a participation, like there's a life. But he says it's hidden in your understanding of Christ, of Christ, of Christ. Who is Christ in me? He says Christ is made unto you. Sanctification from God, righteousness, wisdom. When would we tap into these things? But every, everything else identifies. Your IQ test, you're this, you're that, you're this. Somebody told you that there's something called IQ. Are you aware? Someone told you, listen, you have looked into your body, you've never found IQ. I feel the anointing. You've looked into your head, you never, you never found it. Have you, have you noticed that? But somebody told you that there's something you can use to judge human beings called IQ. How about Christ? You could believe that there's something called intelligence quotient. Think about it. You judge yourself by it. You relate with it. You say, this is my thing. So you avoid certain activities. Some people are like that. They avoid certain activities because maybe their IQ doesn't reach or does not. Do you understand? But he says, what is Christ? What is that Christ in you? Meaning he's trying to tell you that he introduced something into you. See, there's no, there's no addiction. There's no, there's no nothing. It will break when this understanding comes. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There's one price for true freedom. Knowing the truth. Freedom isn't free. 
So someone told you that this is how smart you are. Someone told you. You didn't know by yourself. You didn't wake up with it. Do you understand? Someone told you that there is such a thing that they can use to measure. Now he's saying, which is Christ in you? What is Christ in you? What's his real thing? Like, what is, what is the meaning? The hope of glory. This was what motivated Paul to preach the way he did. To move the way he did. They said, you're going to die in Jerusalem. You're going to die. He said, for this gospel? He said, none of these things move me. A prophet even said, ah, whoever holds, whoever's, whoever's belt this is, he's going to die. He said, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. He said, I'm not only willing to face stripes, I'm willing to die in Jerusalem. Why? What could have been the motivating force? He had discovered something. He was bit by a serpent. He shook it off into the fire. Like you be condemned, I live. They expected him to swell. Ah, no, they said the gods have come down to us. What was it that he understood? He's the same one that wrote, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him. Christ is my life. Think, think about Christ is my life. No, Christ is my life. Like, my life is not flesh and blood. Christ is how did, imagine, how did he, he said, when you read my epistles, you will now get my understanding, my sonesis, the way I have put one precept upon another of this thing called Christ. He said, these things that I've received, I didn't receive them like somebody told me. He said, I received them by revelation. He talked about a communion that he never sought. He wasn't there at the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. He wasn't there. We even use his one to break bread. We open 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but he received it by revelation. Nobody told him about it. What life are we meant to live? But from this, I want you to re recognize when we're talking about the circumcision. He says, the circumcision we've been circumcised is not of the, it's not of an outward show with the hands, but it's an inward one, something happening on the inside. And when you understand that your heart has been circumcised, what does it really mean? So I want to read you, this is where I was going all along, and I wondered the first time I ever saw this scripture, what I would, what I would do, what I would do, how I would pass it across, he says, he calls us the circumcision. Look, he says, not of the flesh, but of the heart in the spirit. Whose praise, your praise is not of men. Your praise is of God. Never forget that. So, 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 what does it mean? Philippians chapter 3 from verse 1. Boy, I think if you get this, you'd love it. Rose kapala gradigas. So what does he say? Finally, my brethren, rejoice. Rejoice. He says, above everything, at the end of it all, rejoice. Be happy. Rejoice. Joy. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, it's not grievous. I can write the same thing to you, but for you, it is safe. We've been preaching the same message, this same Bible. It hasn't changed. He says, I can write the same things to you over and over. He says, beware of dogs. Not physical dogs. Or, or um, yeah. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. He says, beware of those who make difference. Who divide. That's, that's what the concision is. For we are the circumcision. Kai. Beware of dogs, Aye. beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are, we're not going to be. And when I tell you what this word circumcision means, as in carry it with all your heart and you keep saying this about yourself. 
with a week of conflict, just keep saying, I am. See, because you have to say it with understanding. Ah! For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Oh, I wish I could take the whole thing. He says, though I might have a reason to be confident in the flesh. Remember, the open show of the flesh. So, though I might have a reason to be confident in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he, he has something to trust in the flesh, I have more to trust in. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. He just said we are the circumcision. But he says, this is not what I'm boasting about. Meaning that this second one is mentioning, he's talking about the fleshly circumcision. So he says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. Imagine, Benjamin means son of the right hand. But, and he was of that tribe. He says, so I have things in the flesh. And Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, I was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, I am blameless. Imagine a man. He, he said, the full law. I, 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 oh, but what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency, the surpassing greatness of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. I said to know him is the best thing. It's the best thing. Nothing beats it. He says, I counted them but dung, nothing. I said, they're nothing compared to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And I do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Oh, dear Lord. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Oh, not as though I've already attained. He says, I press toward the mark. This one thing I do, I press toward the mark. He just keeps going on. But what's my focus? We are the circumcision. You see, that's the highlight of this verse. Now, now, I'm sure you want to know what the word circumcision means. I want you to look at this. The word is peritome. Look what it means. It says, the extinction. I want you to see that word. You know what it means for something to be extinct? It says, the extinction of passions and the removal of all spiritual impurity. Oh. See, I'm trying to, trying to purge myself. Purge, 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 purge. I'm trying to do some cleansing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Peritome, the extinction, the total obliteration. How clean are you? People don't talk about it. How clean are you? Somebody told me, righteousness unto holiness. We're still trying to attain that holy. Righteousness unto holy. You know, so he was like, we're trying to. But, but, but look, he says, we are the circumcision. I'm about to explode. We are the circumcision. He says, the extinction. He says, look at my life. You see, I've been totally extinguished. That is... The extinction of passions, loss, oh, and all spiritual impurity. If there was anything impure you could ever imagine, it's not in me. You can't find it in me. Can you believe it? And removal of all spiritual impurity. This circumcision is by the faith, is by faith in the Lord Jesus. He says, never be ashamed of your salvation because it was to produce just what he wanted. A perfect creature. He looked at man. 
The Bible says that the Lord, he, he frequently treads and questions the motive of a man's heart. And, and he saw it and, and it was exceedingly evil. So he cut off his days because he had a plan to give him something more than just more years to live. To give him eternal life, the very life he had, impregnable. You know that word impregnable to sickness or disease. He says, you are born of the incorruptible word. Do you, know what, do, you, do you know what it means to say your life is incorruptible? It means it can't be affected. One day we're going to talk about what it truly means to have eternal life. And what it means to be incorruptible. Because when you, when you understand that, you'd know why he says you go through the fire and not be burned. He wasn't talking about spiritual fire. You know, just spiritual fire. Just the heat of the moon. No, 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 no. No, it's not just, it's not always fictitious. After all, there were men of the Old Testament who were put into the fire, heated up seven times hotter, and they were dancing. They weren't dancing because it was too hot. No, they were having a Holy Ghost groove. And, and he looked. Now the fourth man is living inside you. And his life can so, can so transform you, your mind, your heart, your liver, your lungs, everything about you, carrying that life. It can so happen. Listen, this is why, this is why it's beyond by his stripes we were healed. It's gone just, it's gone beyond that. Because now it's not about his stripes anymore. It's a totally new creature. It's why sickness is, is an anomaly. It's like it's it's irreg it's inconsistent with your life. It's an error in the program, so you delete it. Hmm. There's a way to deal with things as a Christian. There are so many hopeless situations as I've shown you from the Old Testament, which God made provisions for in the New. You don't stop where they stopped. Your destiny can't be capped. Who held it? Who said the thing and it cometh to pass if the Lord has not declared it? Who is he? But it says you've been totally, that is, you're, you're, how clean? There's a holiness about you. It's different. Stop trying to attain this cleanliness. No, believe it first. Start from that standpoint. Then, then start confessing it, talking it, and then start patterning your life. After a while, you'll be living in your convictions. you believe in them. Look, I know what this is. There is a train, the Bible says, a training in righteousness. That the word of God is profitable for a training in righteousness. Meaning, not because you hadn't gotten the righteousness already. No, that righteousness was imparted to your spirit, but it will train you. So now you're walking those steps. The Bible says they were preordained. We're not trying to walk them. He says, we were preordained to walk in righteous paths. But he says the word of God is there to guide you, to literally write a new program. There's something, the programming of the body. We're going to talk about it someday. So Yeah. So that's the truth of the word of God. Read you one last one. He says we are the circumcision, but which worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus. The word rejoice actually is boast. We boast in Christ Jesus. We glory in him. I'm in Christ Jesus. But if you don't know what, what Christ is in you, or what it means to be in Christ Jesus, how would you boast about him? How do you rejoice in him? Every time you're thankful to him, you're thankful to him about the smallest of things. He's like, there are greater blessings. But you've not enjoyed them yet. But he says, we rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. You're not concerned about the things that concern this world 
That's not your problem. It's not your business. The report. No confidence in the flesh. Do you know what it means? No confidence in the flesh. Imagine a life with no confidence in the flesh. You know we trust our flesh so much. We trust how we feel. Ah, your body is hot. Your this. You. It's not anointing. It's sickness. It's symptom of fever. Imagine you trust the flesh so much. Meanwhile, God says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Meaning, the report of faith is that your weakest hour is your strongest hour. That's why Paul said, I rather glory in my infirmities. When I'm weak like that, I love it. That, that's, I'm glorying in that moment because I know, because he says, I want the power of Christ to rest on me. So he says, I glory in my infirmities. For when I am weak, then... It is, I am strong. He was living by a different conviction. Practice it. Practice what I'm telling you. You have to practice it. Practice it. Practice it. It's the life he called us to live. Colossians 1.20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your minds. This is important. Enemies in your minds by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. You can't be improved. Unreprovable in his sight. Then he says, continue in the faith. Let me read you. And, and this is what proves to you that it's been solved. Let me read you that same verse. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh yes. Let me read you that same verse. Because he shows that it's been fixed. The very problem. Do you remember? He says, and although... You at one time were estranged and alienated from him and were, a, and were of a hostile attitude of mind in your wicked activities. Did you see that? Hostile attitude of mind. Alienated and hostile minded. Oh, alienated and enemies in the mind. He says that was the problem. He says you've been made holy. That is pure. Pure. Holy, separated, pure, and unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. And if God sees you as clean, that means you're clean indeed. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's what the scripture says. So he says, continue in the faith grounded and settled and don't be moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard don't be moved so we are the circumcision you have to believe that we're the circumcision who worship god in spirit i can quote that who worship god in spirit rejoice in christ jesus and have no confidence in the flesh it's one of those ones i i took very personally because it's our identity. And the Bible says that when you look, continue looking. Don't turn away and forget who you are. You mess up when you forget. See? When you forget. The Bible says that they forgot that they were purged from their sins. That man who didn't manifest those fruits says he has forgotten that he was purged. So if I keep in remembrance that I'm the circumcision, I'm, purged. I'm no longer trying to maintain a good image. Instead, I'm like, ah, that's a foreign thing to do. And it can so affect your thinking, you live differently. Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God and was blameless. Amazing. 